Today we're taking a look at the new Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360 ARGB. Is this the best AIO liquid cooler you can buy right now? In fact, many report of not only outstanding cooling performance, but also a price that is hard to say no to, at least over here in Europe. This is partially due to the fact that Arctic is currently celebrating their 23rd anniversary, thus offers their customers attractive introductory prices up until May 20th, 2024. In Europe, that's roughly 88 euros right now. But in the US, the price currently is at about 150 US dollars, I believe, for today's 360 ARGB version in black, because there also is a white one available. How well does the Liquid Freezer 3 compare to its predecessor, the Liquid Freezer 2, also in terms of noise levels and overall setup? And what about the installation and mounting hardware on both Intel and AMD systems? Some users report minor to even more severe complications. So what are my experiences with that? Right off the bat, I will let you know, Arctic have certainly improved quite a few aspects over their previous series with this Liquid Freezer 3, but there aren't just advantages and improvements over the Liquid Freezer 2. Here and there, we sadly also have to witness drawbacks. They back this product up with a 6 year warranty. As was usual with the previous models, Arctic ships everything practically pre-assembled right out of the box. The fans are already attached to the radiator and you no longer have to worry about any of these individual cables. However, a so-called VRM module is part of the scope of delivery. Inside that module sits a 60mm PWM controlled fan, which directs some airflow to your motherboard's VRM. Of course, all the mounting brackets and screws are also included, some of the MX6 thermal paste, and finally, two types of connection cables for the entire cooling unit. Just like with the Liquid Freezer 2, everything can be controlled with a single cable using an all-in-one cable, or if you prefer having more control over the VRM and radiator fans, as well as the pump speed, then you use the cable for individual control. Anyway, the pump looks pretty weird yet interesting without that VRM module on it. The module simply snaps into place when putting it on and is held in place by magnets. What's new over the predecessor Liquid Freezer 2 is the fact we can now angle and move the tubing on the water block slash pump. Definitely an advantage. The fittings on both the pump unit and the radiator no longer look as cheap as they used to, although plastic is still used here. The radiator appears to be identical to that of the predecessor, a 360mm aluminum radiator with a respectable thickness of 38mm. I think it's great that the lighting is based on the standard 5 volt 3 pin connector. Furthermore, we can connect even more and do some daisy chaining here. Both the fans and the visually appealing VRM module light up. Previously, I never really was impressed by Arctic's AIO coolers aesthetically. With the Liquid Freezer 3, they've now earned even my praise for the looks here. While I wouldn't consider this to be the outright prettiest of designs, it's far from bad. Arctic has yet again gone with their in-house pump for this new AIO unit. Apparently, there were further improvements made for the pump. The tube length here comes in at 450mm and while the tubing is beautifully sleeved, they are now kept neutral all in black and no longer sport that eye-catchy snake pattern as seen on the predecessor. Compared to the Liquid Freezer 2, it is also clear that slightly different fans are used, namely the P12 PWM PST with ARGB lighting. These achieve a slightly higher max fan speed. It is therefore to be assumed the Liquid Freezer 3 could end up being a little louder than its predecessor. According to Arctic, only the latest CPU sockets are supported. Among them would be of course AM5 and AM4, as well as LGA1700 and even 1851, the latter of which hasn't even properly been released yet. Now how was the installation onto my test systems? Starting with AM4, the offset for AMD Ryzen CPUs is already taken into account right out of the box. That 5mm offset is pretty much predetermined. With the Liquid Freezer 2, we still had a choice. Otherwise, there were no reasons for me to complain when it comes to the installation. Regarding the Intel system, I was greeted by a slightly unusual procedure. Since the ILM, the entire locking mechanism holding the Intel CPU in its socket, has to be unscrewed and removed, only to then use Arctic's own contact frame. 
This is supposed to protect the CPU from excessive pressure and thus the formation of the CPU in the long run. While the mounting method was a bit strange and unusual for me, I still have to admit that I like the installation of the Liquid Freezer 3 much better than that of the Liquid Freezer 2. However, there is something you should most certainly look out for when it comes to compatibility with certain motherboards. Some boards are known to come with oversized M.2 SSD heatsinks and coolers, meaning sometimes the pump unit could interfere with such M.2 coolers. Arctic therefore provides a compatibility list for your reference. Be sure to check it out before purchasing. Well, we are yet again about to cool the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X and the Intel Core i9 13900K specified to run at its fixed power limit of 253 watts. I'd also like to point out that I tested today's Liquid Freezer 3 with those two different connector cables, all in one and individual. Noise levels. At max fan speed, it quickly becomes obvious that the new Liquid Freezer 3 is operating one or two decibels louder than its predecessor, yet is still within limits, so to speak. Nonetheless, the fans and pump are clearly audible at max RPM. Temperatures at max fan speed with the AMD 3800X. Unfortunately, the Liquid Freezer 3 does not seem to provide any additional performance over its predecessor when testing with the 3800X CPU. Still, we're looking at an excellent result, even though there are also many good alternatives that bring similar performance to the table. However, the 3800X is likely limiting and holding us back here. Temperatures at max fan speed with the Intel 13900K. In the Prime 95 stress test, the Liquid Freezer 2 and 3 go neck and neck, but position themselves quite above the other cooling solutions out there. Both Liquid Freezer models that are controlled using the all-in-one connection deliver exactly the same performance in this particular test run. Only once the speeds are set individually to their max, we are able to squeeze out the last drop of additional performance. This, however, also comes at a cost of slightly higher noise levels, as we were able to measure earlier before. If we now repeat the test in Cinebench 2024, where we are dealing with quite the heavy AVX load, competing CPU coolers are now catching up. However, it is also clear that the Liquid Freezer 3 goes to show its strengths the higher the temperatures rise. The new Liquid Freezer 3 already being 2 to 3 degrees Celsius more powerful than the already impressive Liquid Freezer 2. Obviously, it did really well to begin with. Temperatures at a fixed 40 decibels. If all coolers are now tested against each other in a normalized 40 decibel run, it unfortunately quickly becomes obvious under a Prime 95 load that the older Liquid Freezer 2 still is slightly more powerful at the same exact noise level of 40 decibels. The successor AIO lags behind by 1 or 2 degrees. Compared to other cooling solutions listed, of course, still a great result, but I'm slightly disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. But the disappointment luckily is only short-lived, because once the load is increased even further using Senbench 2024, the more current Liquid Freezer 3 is clearly pushing its way to the top, leaving the comparable Liquid Freezer 2 behind by 2 degrees. Generally speaking, a nice result, especially when compared against other 360mm AIOs or powerful air coolers. Conclusion. Without a doubt, Arctic once again goes to show how cooling performance at a fairly reasonable price is done. As usual, they are leaving their competitors behind in many instances. In my opinion, there's hardly anything speaking against picking up such an Arctic AIO liquid cooler these days. Previously, the aesthetics, the look of the predecessor Liquid Freezer 2 was a bit off-putting for many, or rather, it didn't really match any of the designs of systems it went into. But I really welcome and like the appearance of this Liquid Freezer 3, while Arctic's identity clearly is still being very much intact. The installation is also fairly straightforward, I have to admit, although I did read and hear about people having hard times with it before. At least for me, everything went smoothly, so there's no criticism in that regard from me. In general, you should make sure there's no interference with M.2 heatsinks on certain motherboards. It's definitely worth taking a look at Arctic's compatibility list, just to be safe. 
What I would certainly rate as an advantage over the Liquid Freezer 2 is the fact that we are given the choice whether we want to control and operate everything with a single cable or rather control and run everything separately individually from each other. If you are particularly sensitive to noise, I would advise you to use the cable for individual control as the VRM fan is definitely more powerful than the one found on the Liquid Freezer 2, thus also noisier. It's best to reduce the RPM of said VRM fan to achieve more pleasant acoustics for silence freaks. It just takes a little more work and effort to get everything dialed in right on this new Arctic cooling unit to adapt to our needs. That aspect was a bit more convenient with the predecessor. Still credit where credit's due, I applaud Arctic for stubbornly doing their thing and not ditching the VRM fan, but rather making it even more powerful than before. To get back to the daring video title, yes, I would actually crown the Liquid Freezer 3 360 ARGB as one of the best AIO liquid coolers on the market right now. They nailed almost everything with it. Performance, looks, cable management, and most importantly, the price. So I can highly recommend this unit to every enthusiast out there. Now here's a question for you. What are your thoughts on the aesthetics of the new Liquid Freezer 3? What are your opinions on the cooling performance and noise levels? At the end of the day, which of the two is more important to you? If you enjoyed the video, I'd greatly appreciate a like. And if you didn't, just leave a dislike. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.